I'm currently cruising through the canals of Europe with my solar-powered explorer yacht that I'm taking from the cold winter of Finland to the warmth of the Mediterranean. We now have the autopilot on. We're going four and a half knots on economic cruise mode and this is the amount of solar input we're currently getting in the completely cloudy weather. The engine back there is currently at one kilowatt of power. We're cruising forward steadily toward the city of Minden. And today I have a lot of exciting things to share about why I am here in the first place, why I built the Helios 11 prototype by hand and what the future holds for infinite range and fast solar powered explorer yachts. Welcome to mission log 10 of True North Yachts. such a smooth ride. I can just hear the sounds of the water. It's very relaxing. Let's start with the current thing, the ride through the canals of Europe. There we have a barge closing in on us as we're moving with economy cruise speed, roughly 4.5 knots. The feeling of having the possibility to access most of Europe through the canals is just amazing. When you have a boat, you can live on the coastline, you have the freedom of the oceans. But then with a solar yacht especially, you can be sailing through the canals of Europe, England, and I bet America also has a lot of inland canals you can explore the world through. The solar yacht is definitely perfect for the canals because I've understood that most sailing vessels actually can't be sailing in the canals. You don't have so much maneuverability here. And uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a bridge there. Would be kind of a problem to be sailing through here, but we're technically sailing or sunning on solar charge. So that's what I'm also looking forward with the Halo 30 in the next model. It will be a huge boat, but you can still access all of Europe through the canals. It's gonna be 13 meters long and roughly five meters wide. And that means that you will have access to all the canals. The draft of the boat will also be roughly a half meter. So there will be no trouble just driving without any particular skills or thought, just freedom of moving forward. The main question I've asked myself sometimes is why don't I just get a proper sailing boat? They perform very well and it's fun to sail. The lower version of myself would definitely settle for a sailing vessel. I was born pretty much on a sailing boat. My father had built this 33 foot ultra lightweight sailing boat with a adjustable keel, a long keel with a bulb. It was so fast, we went easily 7 to 10 knots on light winds and most people wouldn't even believe the performance, but it was real, mainly because the boat was very smooth, streamlined and low mass, low center of balance and was pretty much only designed for performance and 5% was left over to comfort. But now I want to create something that has 100% comfort and 100% performance. And I can see that the electronic systems, solar panels, they're developing very quickly. And depending on how you want to use and live on a yacht, it's already possible to have a solar explorer that is significantly better in performance than a sailing boat. So what I can clearly see now based on the current version of the Helios 11 and all the field tests I've been on, I've seen the solar charge, I've seen the speed, I've seen the handling in medium waves and heavy headwind. I know that we can already, with basic technology, you can order from Bauhaus or some other hardware store, simple, cheap, easily accessible, and a standard 
apply with build, you can create something that is fairly efficient on an infinite range, but it's not as efficient yet as a sailing boat. But if you use the boat as I do, sailing for a couple days, then stopping by at a marina or a beautiful natural island, then doing some work, heading out to the city, living life. During that time, your batteries will always go to 100%. You'll have full batteries the next time you head out and then you can use more energy than you are generating during your journey with the solar panels. And that means that you will have, even on this simple plywood design, faster cruise speed on journeys that aren't crossing the Atlantic. And when we take this field tested data of the Helios 11, I can clearly say that the Halo 13, the next model, the twin hull, will clearly outperform anything that exists as long as we're not talking about racing boats and to be clear this estimate includes a couple years of solar battery and electric engine development as well as the assumption that you're not a dumbass and would spend your time in winter when you have a yacht as I always say why would you live anywhere else than in a beautiful sunny climate when you have a boat? When you have the resources or just the common sense to acquire and operate a yacht, you should also have the capacity to work remotely or work online on your own business and then you're free to live anywhere. And this aspect of sovereignty and adventure is also core to the design of my yacht. What I'm building here are mobile fortresses that grant you sea sovereignty, a legal kind of freedom where you're possibly not bound to any nation, rather you can take advantage of the best locations around the world. If some country doesn't serve your interests, you simply drive to the next one. Built for innovators and entrepreneurs such as myself, these yachts aren't purely about the sailing experience, more about the practical. So that's why they need to be easy to operate. Solar yachts are incredibly simple to operate. You just press a button and start heading toward your destination. There's no sails to lift up. There's no wind to care about unless you're gonna face a storm. You just go and that leaves more time for living as well as work. The sailing is also nice, but I do not care about sailing for 10 hours a day. That's why I prefer these faster solar yachts compared to sailing boats. And especially if you're in a hurry, you could go for the hybrid design, having combustion engines combined with a lightweight hull and some additional solar power would be very efficient. gonna go for that because um, maybe I'm a bit strange. I really appreciate this 100% infinite range concept combining sails and solar panels. Talking about solar panels, it's time to show you my latest upgrade that is working incredibly well. So it's been very dark sailing from the early winter of Finland now down to Germany and that has inspired me to make some on-the-go upgrades to the Helios 11. Just a couple days ago I made a solar upgrade to the Helios 11. I added two 445 watts standard panels on the rear as an extension of the roof array. But the special thing about these panels is that they're adjustable adjustable in both ways. So you can, looking from the side of the boat, adjust them in this way as well as in this way. And that should give a significantly higher efficiency. But I was wrong. The change is massive. Here in Germany now, it's winter and the sunlight is roughly at this angle during the day. So the input was doubled when I just lifted the panel that much. And furthermore, later in the evening, as the sun set even lower, the two panels started generating more energy than the eight flat panels on the top of my roof. So the next version definitely needs to have adjustable panels. 
based on this information from the panel upgrade, we really have to add this adjustable feature on the roof panels and then the input of the Helios 11 will be perhaps not doubled but in sunny conditions in winter, autumn, spring the input will definitely be doubled taking into consideration the early and late sunny hours. However, we should remember that in cloudy conditions the adjustment of the panels isn't that critical and will definitely not double the input. But in sunnier weather we can definitely double or even triple the input when we compare an adjusted panel to a flat panel. Now that we're on the topic of solar panels, let's include light panels to the discussion. I made a slight kind of an upgrade here at the front deck. I just put on 600 watts of light flexible panels. Previously I had 300 watts, but they haven't been that efficient, I believe because the voltage is pretty low and the sunlight angle is not optimal. They've not lived up to their expectation, but these 600 watt panels, they're working. I think the voltage is high enough to be functional in low light conditions and they are more efficient than the hard panels. Not when the surface is taken into consideration, but when the mass is taken into consideration. Here are the numbers comparing flexible lightweight panels to hard panels at a flat angle during a cloudy day. As you can see, the lightweight panels outperform when weight is taken into consideration. If I'm right here, the lightweight panels are inefficient in low light conditions and that's the conditions we've been testing them in. So when we get to sunnier climates, maybe the lightweight panels become even more efficient compared to hard panels. So that raises the question, could we use only lightweight panels even as they feel kind of like toys and they have usually a warranty of two to five years? And hard solar panels have a warranty of 25 to 30 years, so you would have to be replacing the panels every three years or so to maintain the highest efficiency as possible. The flexible ones wear much faster and the efficiency drops faster over the years. Let's run the estimation on the Helios 11. We remove all of the hard panels, replace them with lightweight flexible panels. Then, because the boat is now way too light, we would add two batteries. I'm gonna do the intuitive math later, here are the results. Do you think this would be viable with the lightweight panels? I'm not sure. I believe that uh, taking away the mass and then increasing the battery capacity would result in roughly the same mass of the boat. Slightly increased stability, but then again you will have slightly less solar input. So in the end it's not worth the hassle. Maybe it could be slightly more efficient, but way more expensive. Now this question about the lightweight versus standard panels brings me to the next topic. How light should we build the boat? Am I overemphasizing the lightness of the yacht? Let's start with the first negative thing about an ultra lightweight design. Even if you have a catamaran with very high stability, you will be kind of thrown in the waves. You will have higher windage compared to water resistance, which might be a problem in very windy conditions, so you have to have increased keel size or optimize the build to be very low profile. And that's something I'm already doing. Another negative is that with a lightweight build, you might go into overthinking everything. How much provisions can I bring along? How much water? How many personal belongings? How many bags of clothes? What about all the adventure equipment such as dinghies, diving equipment, fishing equipment? All of that will be the same mass regardless of your mass of the boat. And what about bringing more people on board? Currently the Helios 11 has a mass of one ton roughly. So if I bring let's say three friends on board, that will significantly reduce the speed. If my boat was still very lightweight, let's say 1.8 ton, 
that increased mass wouldn't make a noticeable difference, I think. So what I've learned now from this ultra lightweight overthinking is that we shouldn't go ultra light, we should go very light. We find the balance of getting over that threshold where solar power becomes efficient enough. And when we have a lightweight boat, the additional sails will also be more efficient, especially on a catamaran, you already have all the stability you need. And as the backup sails of my designs are already quite small, all the stability is included without making any changes to the yacht. These sails bring me to my most recent key discoveries of the design. I want to go 100% infinite range, but we don't have to do that entirely on solar. We have the sails. Sails plus solar, I see, is the most efficient combination. You don't need a backup engine. And let's say we would have a generator on board or a small petrol engine. The fuel plus the mass of that small generator or the engine would already increase the mass of the boat significantly. And then the other systems would become less efficient. This is my reasoning of not including a generator nor a combustion engine. The added mass would technically reduce the power of my solar as well as my backup sails. I believe that when we push this design to 100% self-regenerating propulsion methods, combining that with overall lightweight and essentialist design, still keeping it very cozy, luxurious, comfortable, then we will reach this new age of solar infinite range exploration. And that's where I'm heading. That's where I'm taking this Helios 11 prototype, as well as the next designs I'm super eager to keep developing on my journey. I'm looking forward to go into more of the details, run some numbers and estimates of all of this I've been talking about, optimizing sales, solars, completely ignoring fuel and petrol or diesel engines, comparing the performance of various models where we take into consideration the increased or decreased mass of solar panels, backup propulsion methods, adjustable solar sails, as well as some more details about the Halo 13 that I might start building already next year. So now I'm gonna secure the boat to the harbor, which by the way is very easy to do with such a lightweight design and uh, yeah, no sails to manage. I just turn off the engine and hop on to the pier. I'm glad you watched this video. Stay tuned to my mission of developing these future-proof solar explorers by subscribing. And as always, don't forget to get out there.